wavelength. Their views and opinions of the world are so incredibly wrong that the mere thought of engaging in conversation with them sends a shiver of rage down your spine. Whenever a post with their name on it shows up on your Facebook feed, do you speedily rush past it so as not to have to read their indoctrination? Admit, we all have people like this in our lives. People which we claim to care about, but we just don't seem to ever be able to sit in the same room with them and have conversation. Whenever we end up trapped in a room with them, we try to hide in a corner, avoid making eye contact, and heaven forbid we ever actually have to have that conversation. I've been there. I won't name that. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like maybe I'm the only one in the room who hasn't lost their mind, who holds my particular viewpoint on this issue or that issue, whatever the issue of the day is. And everybody else, everybody else just seems to be following the herd like a stampede. Don't they know that stampedes are dangerous and entire herds of cows can be run off of cliffs? Why can't they just see what I see? They're all just so wrong. I don't even know where to start. Does this sound like a family reunion to any of you? <laughs> you see, all of this boils down to a communication problem. We really aren't communicating. We may be technically speaking the same language, but we're not communicating. I've gone to grad school twice, and I've finished a few technical schools along the way to learn specialized tasks that I wanted to learn, and one thing stands true at each and every one of these experiences. On the first day, I never understand a word that they are telling me. I don't understand the lingo. They can be talking about technical terms, or even not-so-technical terms, but whatever it is they're doing, they're doing it with a certain dialect that I just don't seem to grasp. I haven't made myself familiar with them and their culture yet. I don't understand what's actually being said. You see, in certain cultures, the majority of communication is even non-verbal. Some people might appear quiet, like they have nothing to say, and yet feel they contributed significantly to the conversations through gestures, motions, postures, physicalities. And people who understand that culture would have picked up on that and would have heard what they said. We may all speak the same language, but are we speaking the same dialect? I've lived in many places across many regions and in very socio-economic environments, and each one of them has a different dialect. And you have to understand this dialect first, this cultural phenomenon, this variance, in order to understand the language that's being spoken. But let's go back to our families. Do even our families speak the same language as me? We were raised in the same family, right? Shouldn't we speak the same dialect? No, of course not. The fact of the matter is, we all speak our own dialect. And they're based not only on our own family or region of origin, but they're based in part on our education, our life experiences, and our individual interactions. And get this, many of us speak a handful of dialects in any single given day. As we weave in and out of this social group or context into the next, we change our dialect throughout the day. Believe me, I certainly don't talk the same with my closest friends as I do standing up here in this pulpit. We talk differently to people based on assumptions and things that we know about them trying to talk in terms that can be understood. So why is it that with some people, we just don't seem to be able to communicate? Our words just fly right past them. They don't grasp what we are saying. Think about that for a moment. What if I don't understand what they're saying? Let's take that crazy aunt you have. Let's call her Ethel. That's not the name of my aunt. 
<laughs> Poor Ethel means well, right? She's the nicest lady in all the land. She's always doing charitable works for the poor, volunteering in schools, leading Bible study. Ethel, in many ways, is, is an admirable person. Yet, anytime Ethel brings up her views on certain political or theological points, you just find yourself thinking, I just can't listen to Ethel anymore or I will go crazy. That's exactly the problem. We can't listen and we don't listen. We aren't communicating with one another. We can't hear each other. I can't hear crazy Aunt Ethel and crazy Aunt Ethel can't hear me. When we do happen to engage in conversation, we talk past each other. We cut each other off. I tell her she's wrong because she clearly is. She takes the cookies off my plate and crumbles them like Cookie Monster. And next thing you know, the whole family reunion is filled with anger and rage. You see, I believe, first and foremost, what we see here is a communication problem. Progress is not going to happen anywhere. <clears throat> we feel completely incapable of talking with certain people. We don't have the tools to engage with them. We don't have the words. We don't have that understanding. Simply stated, we are not equipped for meaningful dialogue. Friends, there is good news. The Bible tells us that though we may be speaking different languages, that we do not naturally understand the Holy, with the Holy Spirit, this can be overcome. Let's think about this account in the book of Acts. It's what we call Pentecost, and it's such an important phenomenon, it has its own holiday. So let's look at what happened. And let's think about it in today's terms. The disciples went about talking with people in their own native languages. And the Bible used terms to describe nationalities or ethnicities to differentiate. So they certainly had different languages, right? Being from all those different places. But today, our language might look the same. But I think that what we really see when we think about it is we're not really speaking the same language at all. But we can. <laughs> And when the disciples went about talking to people in their native languages, people said, Oh, well, would you look at that? Oh, Peter over there, he got really drunk. Golly. Drunk Peter talking to those weirdos over there. That's what happens, right? It happens even today. When somebody from one group has the audacity to actually meaningfully engage with somebody from another group, the rumors start up. Is that guy crazy? What in the world are they thinking? Are they even going to have a fight? What good could possibly come from this? Old Pete must have had one too many and got lost on his way back to our table. I'm sorry, Pete, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, folks. This happens today. My parents are retired and they go to a coffee group twice a week. And there's like three coffee groups that meet in the same place at the same time. And each coffee group has different allowable topics of conversation. One is focused on golf. One is on politics. And one on just the general normal life and family stuff. Everybody knows each other in the various groups, of course, and they are cordial, and they get along, and there's never any serious fighting. But when one person wanders off, gets lost, and ends up at a different table, the first thing they, get, they do when they get back is they report everything they found out about that other group. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Friends, we need to invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts. We need to invite the Spirit into our hearts that we can have an open heart and an open mind. We need to invite the Spirit into our hearts that we can listen to the other and not just hear the words that they say, but actually understand what they are saying. Right now, I don't think we understand each other. We need to invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts to allow us to be filled with so much love and empathy that we not only understand the other on an intellectual level, but on a real heartfelt level, where we can understand
understand their thoughts, empathize with their emotions. We can rationalize their reasons, and we can chronologize and understand their personal histories, and therefore understand their psychologies so well that whether we agree with them or not, we can at least have an understanding of how they got to where they are and think, gee, that actually kind of makes sense. You can still disagree and your experience may teach you something different from them, but we need to get to that point where we can understand each other on this deep, deep level. And the key to all this is inviting the Holy Spirit into us, inviting the Spirit into us to give us love in our hearts and to truly embody it. 1 Corinthians 12 and 13 talk all about this recognizing each other's differences as essential aspects of the full body of Christ. It recognizes that our differences are important, that our differences are essential to the full kingdom of Christ. And in recognizing the value of these differences, we can come to a place of love for one another. A deep and profound love. A love that surpasses misunderstanding. A love that's not envious. That's not arrogant. It's not boastful. A love that does not insist on its own way, but seeks rather to understand. A love that's not irritable or resentful, but open-minded. Seeking to understand a love that can bear all things, hope all things, and endure all things. Then, no matter how deep the chasm is between us, a love that endures all things never ends. This is the kind of love we need the Spirit to put in our hearts. Friends, the scripture tells us that this kind of love, this kind of communication, this kind of understanding is possible. It is possible. And the Holy Spirit is there to help us. You see, here's the thing. We can't go back to Babylon. We were never meant to live in Babylon. We were never meant to be one people with one language one culture, one common experience, and one single mindset. We were meant to go out into the world speaking different languages, not just spoken languages, but languages of the heart as well, with a multitude of experiences, backgrounds, thoughts, abilities, and a fullness of the possibilities of creation, the beauty of diversity. Our ability to love will be richer for it. Our ability to feel God's presence will seem more tangible, and our pains and joys will seem more real when we recognize that the multicolored tapestry of our different stories opens our hearts to true understanding, and vice versa. Then, we can truly hear each other, and we can truly be heard. To me, that is the meaning.